started lifting in college um, and it was really to get myself into like a normal gym routine. Um, I had struggled with an eating disorder since I was 14. So that, you know, like when I got to college, like I started to take more steps to take care of myself. Um, like I started seeing a dietitian to help me with all the struggles that I was having. Um, and going to the gym and just feeling better in my day to day was part of that. As I so mentioned, I started going to the gym, was just really doing like dumbbells and this was at my school gym. Um, and I ended up going to a small community gym just off campus. It's called Wildcat Fitness in Durham. And there I really started playing with dumbbells. Like I was doing, um, it wasn't starting strength, it was strong lifts. I don't know if anyone knows what that is. It was kind of weird for me to go not do starting strength and just do strong lifts, but similar sort of thing where you have like an A, B day. Um, and while I was there, one of the trainers approached me um, and said that he would program for me, not in a weird way, just like whatever. I don't know why he did, but he did. Um, and I signed up for a meet in Maine, again, USAPL. Um, went by myself with one of my friends from college. I had no idea what was going on. I don't even know if I knew like how the meet day was set up. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like I, I don't even know if I knew what a flight was or whatever. From there, I did one more USAPL meet, um, met Anthony. <laughs> so he got me in wraps for my next meet. And then right after that, um, I got into gear. So from summer of 2016 to 2021, I competed in gear. In that time, I, I was training at the doghouse originally. Is that right? Training well, at Mellows, Mellows for whatever. a second. So I competed in the women's pro am in twenty seventeen. On the amateur day. On the amateur day. And she won. I won. I won amateur day. I took a picture with Laura, and she said, "Hey, you should come train sometime." It wasn't an in, a invitation to train regularly, but it was I had like been secretly messaging Laura and trying to get one personal training session with her. Right. As a, Which I didn't know. As a gift. As a gift. Yes. And, and then she said that to you on that day. Okay. Right. So like, Sick not us. like, hey, come train, whatever. But so I went down a couple times that summer. The women's program was in April, like it always is. Um, I went down a few times, like very sporadically, like not regular, regular at all. Um, but while I was down there, I really liked the girls, like really clicked with them and really loved like the fact that all the girls were like, there for one reason like you know there's people who drove distances like me and amy weisberg drove down to Col from columbus like uh patty drove from dayton like katie moved from detroit so like everyone was coming to this one place for one goal in my time training there like sporadically i decided that i wanted to do that more regularly so i found a new job <laughs> Um, I was working at a breakfast place originally, and then I, I transferred to this bartending job that happened to miraculously work out like perfectly as far as days and times and whatever. So I did that and then I could go down three days a week. So I was traveling from Columbus to Cincinnati Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then I trained at the dog house How by myself. Is that? It's an hour and a half. It's 86 miles. Each way. Each way. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I did that for a year and a half. Um, so then Anthony moved down to Cincinnati after we, leaving we Westside. Both, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, we both did. <laughs> um, after leaving Westside and then 10 months later, like trained there together. He trained at night. I trained in the morning still. Um, and then we both left and went to Columbus, um, and trained with the night crew. With Hoff at West Side. At West Side, then we all got kicked out. And then we trained at the Black House. And then in 2021, 
Um, that was my last multiply meet. Um, I don't want to say last because it's like, will I get in it again? I don't know. Um, but as far as like, as competitive as I'm going to be, that was my last multiply meet was in 2021. Just so from there, like, stuff. I decided I needed to like clear my head and I don't know, I just was, wasn't having a good relationship with powerlifting. And I wasn't sure if it was powerlifting itself or if it was external. So I was just like, I need some space from this. So stopped lifting um, in gear, left the doghouse, went to a commercial gym just because I, I feel like I couldn't emotionally be there. You know, like my numbers were there, the monolith was there. You know, it's very hard to, to separate yourself and like continue on a or like go to a different path if you're in the same environment. So I went to this commercial gym, Power Shack in, in Columbus and trained there, worked there, worked out there for five days a week, started lunging, jump roping, doing whatever I could. It was fun, but um, I did that until last year. The dedication didn't seem to ever waver. The focus was a little, from where I was, the focus was too wide. You didn't, like, there was no, I don't want to say there was no focus. There was, like, you well, just I generally didn't just know wanted where to you lose were. Weight, yeah, right? you like, didn't know where you were headed. Yeah, I've literally never wanted to lose strength. Like, that was, like, the hardest time for me always. Um, but I really wanted to lose weight. I was uh, at my heaviest when I was training. I was 214 pounds, which is funny. I'm <laughs> there like now, but it's different. Um, so after I, I stopped lifting. Um, stopped power lifting. Stopped power lifting. I lost 40 pounds. So, you know, I was focused in one way, but like as far as training, it was very unfocused. You know, I did had really no idea like what I was doing. Um, and it stayed that way until we moved back. And so. stayed that way for a while back here too. Yeah. Constantly overtrained because you were trying to power lift, then do circuits, then mm. just didn't want to get, didn't want to put on weight to get strong, didn't want to lose the strength. So that yeah. was really fun. Yeah. And then signed up for a raw push pull. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what made the difference for me on that was that conversation with bill crawford so he was like he would be like in the same arena as like debbie domingo like where not metal guy, militia bill crawford no sorry stone lifting stone lifting bill crawford um he had come into the gym and i still like wasn't competing i was just kind of like doing my shit in the gym and he kind of went on like this what do, what do you want to call it? It like, wasn't a rant. He was like just speech, talking about stuff. You know? Yeah. Like, to him, he, it was probably just a conversation. Yeah. To us. But basically, was, he yeah. was talking about how what we do as strength athletes is important. And how in other cultures, um, you know, strength athletes are revered in a much... Um, like, they have more status almost mm -hmm. whereas in the u.s um it's it's not quite that you know we're looked at as like meatheads but that still doesn't mean that what we're doing isn't important and it's important to like document what we're doing and it's important to keep doing what we're doing especially if we love it um i don't know i don't remember exactly like what he said but it, whatever he was saying was very inspiring. He said to you'll me. look back on these days and you'll be like, we were doing it. We were that doing way. it, yeah. 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 And again, like with the whole like permission thing, like I was, I'd gone on this two year stint of like trying to figure out what was basically like ailing me, you know, like with powerlifting and whatever. Um, and I hadn't put my finger on it. So I was like, well, I know I love powerlifting. I haven't stopped training for it. Like, I, I continue training with barbells and everything. So, like, if I love it, 
then why don't I just go back to it? And that's what I signed up for the push pull. Push pull, bare knee. Yeah, so I did, um, that summer I did a push pull. Um, the following year, I signed up to do a bare knee meet. Full power. Full power. Um, because in my head, like, I have touched every bit of powerlifting besides these two things. Um, one is, like, raw bare knee. Uh, I've competed in sleeves. I competed in wraps. I competed in multiply. So the last two were bare knee and then single ply. So I competed bare knee um, October of last year. Um, I just did a wrap meet. Threw in a random multiply bench only meet. I threw in a, mul a random multiply. Random 330 bench. <laughs> yeah. For funsies. And yeah. then did the wrap meet. Yes. And now this video is coming out the week that you're fucking putting on single, single ply gear. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the last the last frontier is is single ply. So I'm thinking of doing that or I'm gonna do that whenever the entry comes out. Um October of this year, do a single ply meet. And we will be documenting yeah. that. Favorite moments in powerlifting are training. Like with your group, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um like training for powerlifting by myself was not fun. But beyond that, I trained in groups my entire career. And if it wasn't fun, I wouldn't have done it. So that, like training with uh, our group at Iron Empire, training with the Sweatshop Girls, training with the night crew, and then training with our crew now. Um, those are like my favorite like day-to-day -day moments. Um, and then like I love like the days around the meet of course the meet itself but like the camaraderie and all of the friendship happening around like a powerlifting meet those are like my favorite moments of powerlifting i guess i have two first one was uh the fourth pro total um because that was like crazy mm -hmm. i had to recreate a really good meet that i had just done like two months prior um while gaining weight and you know there's no there was no guaranteed success 2020 semifinals um i squatted 705 bench 429 pulled 435 i think that was it but that was my best total it's weird powerlifting came into my life at like a very transitional time in my life um, I started competing in my last year of college, so I went from 16, 17 years of very structured education into, like, the abyss of the world, um, and I think, I mean, I think I would have found my way, um, but I think powerlifting helped me transition from that very structured environment and gave me something to throw myself into. Um, and I think it just made me happier. I think having something that you're passionate about and having something constructive to occupy your time and your mind space, um, it's helpful to like mental health anyway. And yeah, I think it just made me a happier person in general because it gave me something to focus on that was kind of outside of my normal routine. Um, helped me learn how to like set goals and be structured and work towards something. I get very inspired when I and talk to people who have been in the sport or or their sport for a very long time. So like Debbie Dominga is, you know, um, one of those people for me.
just because she's been doing it for so long, it seems like she has no intention of stopping. And seeing people like that almost gives you permission to continue. You know, we talk about this a lot where like other sports, you're kind of taking out, you're taken out involuntarily. And so there's always that point in your life where you're like, am I doing what I should be doing right now? Is it okay for me to continue doing this? I have other goals. Should I reach them? Um, and seeing people like that who have just like continue doing it because they love it. That is really inspiring to me. As far as um, who's had the most impact on my lifting career, I would say you. Of two people. You is me. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, a, that's an easy one, though. That's we just no, but like I want to speak to it, right? Like because you, you say really nice things about me. Um. Again, powerlifting came to me at like a very transitional time in my life, and before I met you, I was USAPL. I don't know if I was even thinking long term with it. It was just what I was doing now, right? Mm -hmm. Like I had done one meet before I met you, um, and I had already signed up for another one. But, but like mindset wise, I was just doing that right that second. I wasn't thinking about oh I could do this for the rest of my life. Um, it was just like an activity or a thing that you enjoyed or whatever. Yeah, definitely enjoyed it. Like I enjoyed training and whatever. But like just I mentally was not thinking that far ahead and meeting you and seeing how passionate you were about it made me realize that it was okay to get into something like that let me kind of like unlock a part of myself that I, I hadn't had access to before um, the second would be Laura um, and Laura Phelps for the for the if you don't know who she is, you're goofing. But. Laura Phelps, yes. Um, in my time training at the sweatshop, I think Laura showed me how to be a female role of leadership um, in a way that felt very genuine and natural to me. The thought of going into a girls group or leading a group of girls is very intimidating to me. Just because, you know, I think you kind of have to have that, like, or at least I thought I did. It had to be, like, that super upbeat, like, you know, typical gym woman, you know. And Laura is very introverted, like myself. And she more so led by example um, and cares, like, so deeply, you know. And there's... You couldn't, you couldn't mistake it for anything else other than support. And so seeing her lead the way that she did showed me that I can do that as well. And I'm hoping that I, I do that. Um, but yeah, she just showed me that I could be in a role of female leadership that was more in line with my personality. At this point, I think I bring experience and I think I'm more confident with coaching and um, yeah, I think I, I just bring another set of eyes. And what do you like? I, I think also competition. Like, I, <laughs> like yes. I think I, I think I can push people, the guys really, I, you know, we don't have another girl in the group so. I can't really speak much to that, but I can push the guys in a way that isn't going to, it's not going to end up as like a, an ego fight. You know what I mean? Because I'm not a guy, right? So it would be like a dick swinging contest or maybe someone would get their feelings hurt if someone kind of challenged them as much as I challenge the guys. Nobody's um, getting away with shit. What are some of your hobbies outside of lifting? <laughs> Quilting. McGonagall. Professor McGonagall. Dang. Do you have a reason why? Stern, but also like very caring. 
uh, depth of knowledge, like of the sport in general. She's been around it forever. She's been at the highest level that you can be. She's fucking sick, sick lifter, great training partner. She helps set up, she helps break down. Uh, usually after like a lift, I go to her for technical stuff, like the fine tuning stuff. It's very cool. It's a super cool asset to have. Fuck yeah. Okay, so obviously I'm biased, but she's the best training partner I've ever fucking had, hands down. Um, she brings a calm demeanor with a underlying intensity uh, that's really hard to teach people. It has to be shown. And I feel like her ability to be silly and have fun coupled with her ability to like turn it on, know when to be serious and sort of like show people what it is to be a professional, I think is fucking huge. Um, and that's sort of the woo woo, the like woo woo stuff. But I think also on like a very practical level, she has an amazing eye for what the weak part of the lift is. Um, and, and not only that, but like how to correct it with positioning um, and what, because of her background, like with Laura and all that stuff, she is really good at prescribing exercises to fix like very specific um, issues. And then also like she pushes, she has a way of pushing, like she's, I, I've only seen her personally train with, with dudes for the most part. I saw a little bit of the sweatshop stuff, but she has a way of pushing men who are much stronger than her with the accessories and like what she does with the main movement. She has this way of like quietly, but confidently not letting you get away with a fucking thing. Because if she has an opportunity, she will do more weight than you and she won't say much. She'll just look at you and then you have to go up. And I fucking really, really value that. And obviously I love her, she's my wife. A lot of knowledge about the sport of powerlifting and just lifting in general. She brings a lot of experience from training with all the different people she's trained with. Experience being successful in the sport. I mean, she has for four pro totals, so like that's a lot. And she brings just like a lot of, um, the, like a different set of eyes. Like she always sees stuff like other people miss and like just like she'll like, and she'll just like make a quick comment and like fix someone like completely. And it's just like, she like, doesn't speak out a lot, but like when she does, it's always like very like important knowledge and it's always like extremely helpful. So I think Val brings a bunch of stuff, but the biggest thing is her experience. I think she has a ton of experience that she helps uh, all of us with um, as far as training and competing and things to look for um, in our technique. She also has a very, very particular um, eye for training and coaching and it's helped me a ton personally i know that um always able to like help me find that exact thing that i need to try and get better or the the little thing that i can't quite figure out she has a really good way about communicating that uh to each of us individually so we can all get better her experience and she's just a really good coach too so, who would it be spongebob and why love spongebob she's kind of silly and goofy sometimes and like Get serious, you know how SpongeBob's serious about the burgers. She's serious about lifting weights. <laughs> so after some deliberation, I would say Michael Myers because she is the quiet killer, and she just quietly goes about her business. And when it's time to fucking handle something, she just handles it, and it doesn't matter who the fuck is there, she's gonna get it done. Uh, I would have to say Obi Wan Kenobi because. <laughs> Um, because obviously, like, he's known as, like, one of the, like, better Jedi of all time, like, basically, and, like, always very knowledgeable and, uh, like, all-knowing and is a great, like, teacher and, like, knows everything and is really good at, like, passing stuff down to other people and, like, is just, like, very calm but also, like, very skilled in his respective, not sport, but job as a Jedi, <laughs> but per yeah. Perfect. Uh, I think I would go Lagertha from Vikings. Uh, she's a killer. 
Uh, I would not want to go against Val in the weight room for anything. Uh, I've seen her bulldog up and, and get some shit done. So, uh, and she can hang with the boys. Like she'll she'll throw iron with any of us. She doesn't care about anything. So I think that's a good well, fit. Character would be Hermione Granger from Harry Potter, uh, and it's because Hermione's a genius and she does a lot better than a lot of the the guys at Hogwarts. So and Val definitely does that. <laughs>